Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Tom Mizzou. You're watching my channel, Mizzou 14. And I'm back doing a review of Law and Order SVU Season 20, Episode 11. Alright, it's one episode I have missed before this new season, before this new continued episode break from the break. And I'm not going to do that one because it wasn't even that like for me. So I was like, let me just continue on with the new episode from there. Alright, so let's just right into it. Alright, so we get this girl named Ava. She was at a party with somebody that she didn't really care about. So she was at the party. It was a lot of drinks going on. It was, I guess it was a lot of couples, a lot of people there. Her boss Trina was throwing something at her loft. And they were having a good time, a lot of people she was talking to. So we, so we saw Ava in the bathroom. She was like, I guess she had a lot going on in her body and it was drinks and alcohol and maybe some stuff she got on drinks and like that. Maybe somebody in the party did give her a drink. And I said, listen, I don't mean to take a drink so somebody give it to me. I make my own damn drinks. Or if, I, if I, somebody is a bartender making drinks, I will wash the bed pour my drink. You're not doing nothing to my drink that I didn't see myself. I got it here. So, so she was in the bathroom washing her face and everything, trying to get herself together. So we get this lady named um, Sadie came in. And she said, are you okay? And then she said, yeah, I just, I just need to get a break. So she said, okay, I could, I could get my husband. He's a doctor. And they went out. Huh. Next week, we know, we saw Ava roaming around the streets and all, like, discombobulated and everything. And she was there. And we saw she was, like, really, like, messed up her hair, messed up everything. Her face messed up. She was crying, walking down the streets, going to different houses, ringing bells. And nobody was answering. So she finally went to one person bell. He was in a bed with his um, spouse. He got to say, you got the wrong bell. You got the wrong number. And she said, please help, help. And he looked at it. He's like, he saw the video. She said, are you okay? I need help. So he went down, saw her. She said, are you okay, sweetie? Oh, I saw she said, I've been late. And that's when they took her to the hospital. So then we get Benson Kavitsi was there. And he talked to, talk to Ava. And Ava was saying she don't really remember much. But she did remember that she um, was... Um, she did remember that she was in a bed. She remember a bed. She was tied in the bed, and she smelled like a sweet fragrance called sweet Gucci, something like that. And then she remember was that it was day. They thought it was one person to say it was day. It was a couple. It was a man and a woman, and they both vape her. I said, oh snap, a couple vaping. Oh, that's not good. It's bad enough when one person, but now we get a couple. That's ridiculous. So, um, we was like, what happened? So, it was like, um, that's what she said when she realized it wasn't happening. She got up, untied her stuff, and then ran in the street. And that's when she realized it was two people. Because she said one person was holding her down. And, uh, so, she was like, so they went to, um, Finn and Carissi went to talk to Trina at her loft. Because it was her party. And she just made to say one person that they did see Ava talking to was Lee. He was passed out on her bed because she said she was doing something with him in her bed. So it was like, okay, it's not him. But she did say she was talking to this couple. And one of the couple bought a freaking expensive bottle. And the bottle, it was in his hand and all that stuff. So that was a go back for that. They went back in the office, checked that it was the Lee. So the back to square one, but... Rollins said, no, it's not back to square one. We found out who bought this bottle, and the credit card goes to this guy named Heath Barrett. He's a well-known plastic surgeon, a celebrity plastic surgeon, so he's well-known on television and stuff like that. And his wife named Sadie, I think she owns um, a bakery, so like that. And Ava identified those two. She immediately identified the guy and the woman. I said, yeah, they the one who did this to me. Uh, I had nothing else going by. They didn't want to do this. They did this. They found out she had a black um, BAC of 0. 0.15. 0. I said, that's a lot of alcohol. And then they said she had um, drugs in her system. And it was like, wow. I forgot what the drugs was, but she had drugs in the system when she do that. So she was really like a lot, of, really out of it when she do that. So I can't. Imagine why she would ever consent to any sex, which I don't think she could even consent because she probably would have been knocked out unconscious and have these people take away um have advantages of her. So they went down and sort um 
Carisi went to talk to, I believe it's Carisi went to talk to, um, Benson went to talk to Heath, and Carisi, um, Heath, which is a doctor, and Carisi went to talk to Sadie. So, Benson was questioning Heath, and, um, Carisi was talking to Sadie, and they both had similar stories. They both said that they met this lady, well, Sadie, Sadie met this lady in the bathroom. She saw her, she saw her, she said, let me, um, Take you outside because she needs some air. Sadie said she made me drink some bottle of water and then she went out and she blacked out. So Sadie said she took her outside of the air. Sadie, um, Sadie said that Ava wanted this. She took them outside. She gave them ecstasy. He didn't take ecstasy. She took ecstasy. And they was liking it. They was kissing, making out. They both said that Ava wanted her to go back to things. She wanted to fantasy, to live her fantasy. That she wanted to be tied up and have the way with her, and that was part of her fantasy. It was all consensual. She agreed to this, and that's it. And they both had similar stories. I said they both stories were so identical, similar to each other. It was like, wow, did they rehearse this damn story? Which I do believe they rehearsed it. That he came up with the story, and he said, let's say if the pops came, if the cops pops, if the cops came to you, say this. Whatever question to say this, and this will be good. So they had that. And then they went back to um, to the um, office. Ava came and she said, what they saying? What they saying? They both saying, well, they kind of saying that it's, you, it's consensual. That you gave them the drugs, ecstasy, because um, Ava said she don't do drugs. So it's crazy that she found drugs in the system, maybe because she got um, drugged in her drink. And she said, no drugs, so I would not give them ecstasy. That's crazy. It's stupid. I, and they said, do you believe me, right? And it's Benson and uh, Rollins was in the office, and it's kind of hard. They didn't want to say they yes, because it's like, it's day against two against one. And they both said it was consensual, and you said it's not. So it's like, what can they do? But they said what they're going to do is they're going to start building the case, and the first step is to search the damn house. What are we going to do that? Search the house. They were searching the house. They found a medicine camera. It was like all these drugs in there. Um... And uh, they they found weed. Oh, sorry, that. They found weed, and then it was like they saw this drawer. And when they opened it, they saw a drawer with freaking flash drives and everything. It looked like it had dates and, and not dates. It had first, second, third, whatever, and with the names of women that they had recorded. So basically, they recorded their sessions, and they looked at it. And you can clearly see that Ava was unconscious. She was not awake. So she, she was clearly couldn't consent to the damn sex. And so they went to charge them for rape one. So they got them, because they were in the midst of it, they were charging them. They got, they was in a, um, the couple was in a freaking back kissing some chick. And they raped, um, raped them. Chick, and they went to arrest the them. She said, what you doing? You harassing me? You gonna get my lawyer? And stuff like that. And... That's that. So they went to uh, question them in the thing. And they showed the videos of different females and stuff like that. They they named the people they had sex with. And they basically said it was consensual. They had their fantasies. They wanted to live their fantasies. So we played their fantasies all out. And it was no way. We didn't do anything to them. So this lady said that she was assaulted. That's not good. And he said, yo, if you continue saying that I saw to her, I'm going to get my lawyer and this is going to be crazy. So they let her go. So I guess they made, they got out. And then when they got out, they went on television, blasting the service, saying that these women's uh, claims is false. No, you know what? They got a uh, rain and stuff like that. They got out of the rain because... They said, let's question the ladies that they mentioned. And all the ladies that they mentioned, they said, let's say, yes, it's quite crazy. They filmed me, but they didn't do anything to me that I didn't want them to do. It was a fantasy. I enjoyed myself. It was something that I did in my private life. So it's not to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed of what I did. And yes, it was consensual. All three ladies said it was consensual. The only one who said it wasn't was um, Ava. So it was like, she was the odd man out, and it's it gonna make her case not well grounded if all these ladies say it was consensual except for her. 
So it's like we need more concrete evidence that it's them and that he had they had a pattern of that because they said they had ladies dating back for ten years, and now these ladies is not saying that it was rape. So it's only her words against theirs and anybody else. It's like they say that they, so they, they they don't collaborate her story, her claims that they are predators out there who put it on women and a dominance over these women and they raping them. And that's not happening. So they went on television the next day because they got, they got, I guess they got a lane out or they made money out. And basically saying that, no, this girl ain't able, she's she claiming that thing and it's all completely false. I love my wife and this what we do. We uh, we have a active sexual lifestyle and we just write other women's in bed and she loves it and that's part of our life. And say so he was sitting there next to her husband and just laughing, um, agreeing with everything he's saying and stuff like that. And I said, oh, shit, I'm not saying he knew the most of the talking. I said, mm, mm-hmm, Sadie. But Ava was not having it. She was like, oh, my God, they make me at the bad one. I've been phone calls and phone calls. People come um, calling me nonstop about this. Make me, I'm the liar. And that's how they usually do. It's like sometimes when you, especially when you're talking to somebody who's well-known and stuff like that, they make you feel like you wrong for coming out, speaking forward, to speak your truth. And they ain't in the right because they're a celebrity, so they people don't think that they would have done that. And then you come out and all of a sudden and say they would have done it. And it's like, usually it's how tr- sit and tricked this is. Most likely people will blame the victim than the people who blame the uh, people who have done it, the abusers. So it's like, wow. Especially when the people got money. And they would say, oh, she want fame. She want to be, that's how it is. That's how it is. They say, she want fame. She want money. She want to be known. Why she would come out saying that this plastic surgeon who's well known, who does stuff in the community, and will say that oh, this guy raped her. She's a liar. And she said, you know what? Forget it. I'm not testifying. I'm dropping the thing. So no, no. Get somebody else who will testify. So right then and there, you think that case would be like completely washed up. But Carisi... Good to him, he does a lot of dick and good thing could he's very thorough. And he said he found a a cryptic video in her laptop, whatever, that's is his laptop that's showing a girl unbutton his pants by like getting her fellatio, it's like that. And the girl was like was nowhere it was very underage. It looked like she was like 14, 15 at the time, and he was going to med school. So, if they could prove that he did this before med school or something like that, they could get him on something. Um, so, she said, go ahead, go ahead. Um, go ahead with that. So, I guess they questioned Lori, his like roommate at the time at the school. She said, oh, yeah, I know him. Man. He's very persistent and stuff like that. And since I didn't want to do that, he made his five-course meal and I wasn't there for it. So, that was that. But... He did was around this area when I used to live at. And she showed, she gave, I guess she showed him where she used to live at. And stuff like that. I was like, oh, okay. And they were trying to figure it out. So, that same video, they, I guess they saw the father. Benson went to see the father. And the father was breaking down. He was like, oh my God, this is crazy. She, it was happened seven years ago. She ran away. I don't know what happened. She told us one day at school. At the school that day, she never came back. My wife and I, my wife and I, her mother was like, she was so sick. We was like, we had a fake funeral because she thought she was dead. She never came home. We lost faith, lost hope. It's like, it was no closure, basically, for them. And she said, Cece, well, her name was Cecilia. They called her Cece, Cece, and... Cece and the mother was very close. She told her a lot of things and how they go by. We believe her and stuff. But that's what happened. It just never came back. So we just moved forward, but we never gave up. And then my wife died a year ago, and I'm still around. So it's like, what can be done? Because at the end of the day, it's like, it's no closure. It's still like an empty hole in her heart that we don't know out there what's out there. Is she's dead? Is she still alive? What is it? It's like. I can imagine how you could lose, you raise your child and then your child just gone missing and you want to know what happened. Like, no closure, you don't get to see them. You don't, you're not, you don't even know her body is still there and she's still around somewhere. It's like, 
it's like a question in your mind. What if she came out? This is that happened. What are you making all these scenarios? Oh my gosh, what can I have done to protect her? What would happen? What was wrong? It's like I can imagine what the parents go through for doing all that, going through all that with a child or children. So he was destroyed, and it said it'd be better off that she didn't see this because she wouldn't have been devastated for that. And I said, yeah, it would be. So Finn and Carisi went down to the area and met with this lady and they said, did you uh, know the guy named he bad around undergrad medical school all the years ago? And she said, oh yeah, yeah. And she talked about it, said, oh yeah, he went to this thing, he came to me, he went to, went to this house, they had a basement. They went to the basement, they showed a video where he taped the location at and they said, this is right here. And they said, yeah, and then, um, they saw a wall panel that looked kind of out of place. So she said, oh, no, we had no repairs and all that. Like, so they tell her to go upstairs. When they ripped up the wall, it was a dead body. I said, oh, my God, don't tell me that CC. He killed CC and put her in the wall and buried her in the wall all this long ass time and just ran away and never looked back. I said, oh, if this has happened, he's a murderer. Serious rapist and a murderer, like a predator. And a murderer, so like that. If they could get him in the rape charges, they could get him something else. Was a murder, so it was like they gonna pin this. So they looked at this. They find that they went back in the office and said, "Listen, if this is CC, oh, we got him on it." But it turned to find out the follicles in the brush that the father gave Benson didn't match the bones um, DNA that they found. There was somebody named Mora. And so it's not CC. It's like, all oh, that. And so it's that. Like, she said, the business said, yo, this video is compelling. Like, it's really convincing. So we could convince somebody else. So Benson could proceed to show the video to Sadie while Wallace talked to Heath and the lawyer. Because, you know, the lawyer um, was like, what are you charging my um, guy for? And he did this. And sex is consensual. And they had three way or something like that. That's not aggressive war. I said, shut up. So I said, oh, well. So basically we're getting through Sadie and then she showed the video and she was like, oh no. So I, I said, no, he's not a murderer. He's like murderer or something like that. This not this, he's not this, all that crazy. And then she showed the wall. He said, no, he wouldn't do that. And now with all the missus talking and talking and going back and forth, that figure he was like a narcissistic kind of prick anyway. He was like all into himself. Like he really thought he got away. Like he didn't do nothing. This is that. Y'all doing too much. And they were trying to play it on. He said, did he ever... Do you ever make your fantasies, live in your fantasies, I can make it happen for you? He was saying that to Wallace, and Wallace was not having it. And then she said, no, he's not a murderer, all that stuff like that, what's that? And he would never do some underage girl, all that stuff like that, not when you find out. And then Vincent said, oh, she said, not when you, you're not going to find out anyway. I said, what? And that's what Vincent said, oh, my God. Oh my gosh. It makes sense. She said, what? You CC. She said, no, shut up. I said, no, you CC. She said, no, 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 I'm not. No, no. She said, you are CC. And come to find out that girl Sadie, who his wife so I, was CC, the one, the one, that 14 years old, I think. She groomed her, changed her look and everything, plastic surgery, all that stuff to make her wear how she, he wanted her to be. And he, Benson was trying to crack her down, crack her down, so CC. And it's a funny crack down and say, yo, uh, it was another lady before me. And he loved, I, because she was going like, oh, he loves me, he wants me, and so like that. I'm trying to be feel beautiful and everything. He said he loves me. She said, if he loves you, why he keep bringing women into your bed? Like, why are you doing this? Why are you protecting him so much? And I said, that's true. Why are you protecting him a lot? And she said, it was one day. He said it was a girl named Mora, and what that would happen, and then the next day when she she saw her passion, she started back with Mora, he said she ran away. Not knowing that he freaking killed Mora and buried her behind the wall in the house, and never looked back. And guys realized, it was like, good, it was, that's what this is saying, yo, he made you feel like how woman he make you play with your insecurities to make you feel beautiful he trying to perfect the imperfection of a woman and he knows it's just never gonna happen he trying to make it better so that's why he got bored of you 
he got a when well, he got bought a mauler when she didn't get what he wanted from her. He killed her. They got with you, and then he got with you. He groomed you the way how he wants you to groom you, fix you up, and that's how it is. Like they get you young and they groom you the psychological, mentally, emotional, physically, so you can be dependent on him. So Sadie, who was Cece, who's the one away from one away seven years ago. Think it was fall for his trick, fall for him. Like it was all, it was everything about him, and so she was still sticking him, uh, sticking up for him, till she broke. It was like we can't do this. It's like that, and and she said, "Why is all this going on?" She said, "Cause I want to be beautiful," and that's all she ever thought. She was like she didn't feel like she's beautiful, cause she said the guy she crushed on, she was never the it girl in high school, cause that's what. Uh, I think her father said that she was never the um, popular girl. Or I think the girls, Lori said. One of them, somebody said that she was never the popular girl in high school. She always trying to fit in and all that stuff. So she had this question on this guy. But that didn't happen. So I guess she went to this guy named Heath. Think he gonna like her. It was that like, full of her lies. Telling her oh, she beautiful. And that's all she wanted. Because she always wanted to feel beautiful. Want to be that. Want to be felt wanted. And I guess she felt once that she started doing this thing that he wants bigger put um, woman in the bedroom because he got a ball of her. And when he didn't want to do it, she brought on the woman to put in the bedroom. So it create this fantasy and create this thing of his living his life, living his life, and not all about her. And then Ava was behind with violence, and she saw it. And she said, "Oh, I feel for her. She feel, I feel bad for the crush." But then it gave us an inspiration to say, "You know what?" She said, I feel terrible for her. And I will testify. She said, oh, good, good. And she said, if you let me help you, Lord, so I can get a deal if you go testify. And I guess that Cece will testify against Thief and then get her a deal. So I would say, wow, that was a plot, was a plot twist as it is. And they, they didn't know that that one way girl... They found at that video that underage girl was actually was Cece that he blew up and just changed her, and she just came dependent on that guy. And he was very narcissistic. He said, "Oh, I make the girl who I want to be in an imperfection or a fantasy, not carry out all that stuff like that." And he said, "You got nothing on me. I'm getting out." She said, "Sit down." You said, "No, I'm getting away." He said, "No, you're not going away for that. You get away from you going um jail for murder. Sit your ass down." I got sat down. He said, "Sit down." down. So, um. CC Sadie Sadie CC she was in the jail cell. They got the father came down. He said, "I want you to see or something." He said, "I think it's beneficial for you to see, to see." It. And then she saw her, he saw her because he was looking at Bessie. He said, "Who is this chick? This not who was that?" And then he looked at it and she said, "Daddy, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry." And she started breaking down, crying. He said, "CC CC," because all this time he thinking his, his daughter's dad and her daughter's still alive. And he said, I'm sorry, sorry. He said, don't be, don't be. I'm here for you. And that, day, that was a touching scene. I, that was a touching scene. I was like, finally, he got some closure. He got his daughter back, even though it's a long time. It's going to take her a long time to heal. And everything, but glad if we got the father, they can make the work. And that was the end of the episode. I said, I enjoyed it. It was nice. It was a good, it was a different twist at the end. I was not expecting that. But like I said, I have loved Law and Order. Even though Lord and Order not making that much views as my other videos I am doing, I still gonna be doing Lord and Order because I really enjoy talking about something different that is not always a reality TV show, and it's not always drama and stuff like that. It's mostly something that shows everyday thing that people not, people don't talk about. People get raped constantly, sexual assault. It comes to all shapes and sizes, um, all shapes and sizes, couples, singles, heterosexual. Um, homosexuals, it come in all just the same size. The sexual assault had no discrimination, so it's it's really touching, and I like how they tell different stories and a whole spectrum that can range from a lot of things. And there's not this is something one of them you have when you're so young and you fall for somebody older than you and everything. They groom you, you become de so dependent that you lose yourself, your individuality. And all the sake of being wanted, being beloved for somebody, and they they use that, 
to their advantage. And then you be so on, so dependent on them that you start looking after them and think that they couldn't do no wrong until somebody needs to show you the reality of who this really guy is. And then she, Sadie, Cece find out the reality that he is all for himself. It wasn't about, it wasn't nothing about her. He was just a commodity. She was just a commodity for him for his sexual fantasies. And when he got done with her, he started bringing a woman in. And start use, still use her and try to use her to cover up for him. So he won't go to jail because that was just that. But this was a good episode. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. And tell me how you think about this episode and any other episodes of Law & Order. If you do like Law & Order, just like me. I'm an avid fan. I watch every season of Law & Order SVU. And I enjoyed it. And I will continue doing my reviews. I'll talk to you all later. Peace.